You need to make a decision right now. Is it time to wait or is it time to buy? As the cryptocurrency market moves downwards, we need to figure this out. So today we are gonna be discussing exactly that so you guys can be fully informed. If you do wanna make the best of the current market volatility, there is a link down there in my description to over $50,000 worth of deposit bonuses for all of my favorite exchanges. And with that said, if you do wanna stay up to date with any trade I make or you just wanna come and talk to me or other similar investors who are in the same position as you there is also a link in my description to my patreon let's jump into it sam what's up nothing much how are you ah what can i say the market's uh <laughs> not favorable uh my portfolio is not lovely this morning but hey we live and learn yeah definitely i think it really depends on your outlook like it's a good time if you've been looking for a dip i think when we're at 73k and everyone was super bullish a week ago uh, a lot of people wished we could fall down a little bit take a little uh, break from the pump action, reset the market, reset the leverage a little bit, and then buy back in. Um, I know you said that you wanted to ask whether like this is a good time to be buying, so I'll just jump right into it uh, so that we don't waste anyone's time here. But Bitcoin, I'm just pulling up the chart now, it's around dollars $64,000. Um, honestly, I think for a lot of people, it just depends on their own situation. Like if you... If you have a lot of Bitcoin right now, like probably you and me, Connor, um, we were buying the entire bear market. We've been accepting payments in Bitcoin. We've been doing pretty much as much as we could to get as much Bitcoin as possible, even over the last couple months. Uh, so I I feel pretty good about my Bitcoin position. I'll keep on getting paid in Bitcoin from some different apps. I don't think it's a time to really take profits or freak out or anything like that. Um, but I'm pretty comfortable. Like I'm not going out and trying to buy as much Bitcoin as I can right now, but that's because I have a nice big allocation to Bitcoin. It's a significant amount of my net worth. Now I'm just sitting on my hands and waiting a bit. Of course, like I said, still taking some payments in Bitcoin and crypto. But uh, if you don't have an allocation, I don't think it's the worst time to be buying. Like we saw a 15% pullback. Typically in bull markets, we see some 20%, 30%, 40% pullbacks. Uh, but they seem to be getting smaller. Like if you look at the 2016, 2017 rally, we saw 30 and 40% pullbacks. Um, in 2020 and 2021, we saw 150% pullback in the summer where China banned Bitcoin miners. But besides that, it was just 20 and 30% pullbacks. Now we've seen a 20% pullback where we went down to 59K. And now we're seeing like a 15%. So if you don't have any allocation, I don't think it's the worst time to be buying. Like what I say is basically, take some money that you don't need in the next couple months the next six months year and if you want to invest in bitcoin maybe start with a one percent allocation because then you'll feel the moves in the market like you'll still feel the pain if we fall down 20 or 30 percent you'll think oh i could have bought more but then you'll still probably have some cash or not that you could buy more but you you wish you had waited to buy uh that initial one percent but then you probably still have some more cash so that way if we fall down further you can keep on allocating if we move up well you have some uh, money in the game already and you know the on ramps i think that's the biggest thing like you've already done it so it's easier to do it the next time uh, so i don't think it's the worst time in the market to be buying now are we going to fall down next week are we going to fall down today i have no idea uh, i don't think anyone knows but we are heading into the bitcoin having which is typically a bullish time uh, we have big etfs buying um, more than ever uh with the exception of yesterday which we can talk about but I, I don't think anything's fundamentally changed in the last week to make you bearish on bitcoin right now do you think that there's any chance that maybe this time uh isn't different and we do actually have a big pullback i know me and you kind of butt heads on this idea but is there a chance that like now we are actually seeing the pullback that we were expecting or some of us were expecting before the halving and this time isn't different or are we just going to continue up and 15 percent is all we're going to get yeah i mean we could definitely fall down more there's a lot of leverage in the market um but i still think that the market's like relatively or the like some people are really bullish but there are a lot of bears out there it's not like everyone's euphoric right now it's not like we've been um we've been asking for it. I mean, there have been some meme coins that pumped up a lot. Uh, we have had a big rally, what Bitcoin's up 4X from the bottom without really seeing much of a pullback, but it was a pretty bad bear market. Like a lot of people are still kind of scarred from that. So I think we we naturally are a little bit bearish moving into the bull market. But um, what we've seen in the past is pretty quick rebounds from drops. Like even if we fall 30 or 40%, it's not like we're gonna stay there for six months during a bull market. 
Uh, most likely, you know, we bounce down there, we come back up. Um, people think that we're going to fall back down again, and then we just keep on moving up. Like it's it's pretty normal to see those drops, and yeah, we could see it. That's why I always have some cash on the sidelines, but I'm not looking at like deploying all my cash because we fall 15%. Like uh, the cash, I'd rather not put into the market because I put so much already into the market. It's just kind of general cash for the stock market or real estate or crypto, whatever opportunity I have. And um, I've been kind of stockpiling it because we have been moving up a lot. Like we we had six months or a year where we could buy it 17 to 20 K. So we bought a lot there. Um, but yeah, we may, we may see a dip. Um, but I, I don't really care. I'm bullish long-term. So I'm not really trying to make too many short-term decisions. I do have some low leverage long positions that I've opened and a lot of them are still up 200, 300% because I opened them in the forties and fifties and I've just kept them open. I did open one up on Ethereum yesterday. That's down a little bit, but uh, I'm not too worried about it because it is money that I'm willing to risk. Yeah, yeah. I have a position in Dogecoin. A few other positions now, if you watch the channel, obviously. Uh, Dogecoin is my most, I'm happy with that because it's such a small margin and it's still up. I'm still in profit and I've booked that profit. So I think a lot of people are put off by sort of leverage trading and you don't need to leverage trade. You can just trade on the spot market. There's just no, like you can just trade on the spot market, but you can get more upside if you're willing for a little bit more risk on things like Bitcoin. Now, you speak a lot about Bitcoin. You're yabbing on. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I love Bitcoin. I love Bitcoin so much. <laughs> Tell us a bit about altcoins. What your, what's your thought process on altcoins? Because altcoins are, they're not doing great today. They're probably, a lot of them are doing worse. We even saw, and I know everyone's like, wait, hold on a second. Solana can reach higher than its old all-time high and then take a pullback. I'm so shocked by this. What do you, what are your thoughts yeah. on these altcoins? That are, yeah. Yeah. So I, as you can tell, like from the last, couple of days they're so tied to bitcoin there there are runners that still move up like solana's up 20 percent in the last seven days when bitcoin's down 10 percent. but almost everything is down because bitcoin's down now um and again i i said that i'd hit on this real quick so we did have record amounts of selling from grayscale yesterday on bitcoin they had it sold like 600 something million um which was a record we actually had net outflows they're selling a lot of bitcoin but um are keeping their fees quite high so i don't blame people for wanting to sell um <clears throat> on altcoins i have a pretty big bag of ethereum just accumulated it throughout time got paid in ethereum for some different stuff i do really like solana like many people i don't feel like i have enough solana but i realize a lot of that is due to the fact that it's performed so well um so yeah solana can still see pullbacks just like every other cryptocurrency and if it moves up a lot compared to every other cryptocurrency in the market and then we fall down we're probably going to see a pretty nice pullback just like when we moved up i think solana moved up to like 125 and then fell down to 90 or something like that a few months ago now it's still up a lot so i mean we could see a 20 percent pullback when everything else falls five or ten percent and then it can still continue to outperform when we move back up but yeah i mean it does have a pretty convincing flip over bnb recently in terms of market mm -hmm. cap um, it is at the largest market cap it's ever been at because there are more tokens than in the last bull market. Uh, I would not be surprised to see this thing continue to run because it is so much faster than Ethereum. Like I just I just claimed something the other day and I always uh, complain about this to Connor, but I, I don't like spending $80 on fees. I'm, I'm annoyed every time. I'll try to time it a little bit, which probably isn't good uh, when, you, when you're talking about significant amounts of money. Like you should just pay the fee because you don't know what's going to happen to the underlying asset in the meantime. But I hate that. Um, and Solana costs under a cent to do transactions and send uh, transactions. Avalanche is also doing really well. Like Avalanche on the last seven days is outperforming Solana. It's up 30%, um, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate because I got I got paid a little bit from an exchange in Avalanche and I sold that like 54, like three or four days ago. I should have yeah. just held on to it, but that, that's bound to happen. Um, at this point, though, there are like there are a few cryptos that are outperforming Bitcoin solana avalanche but there are a lot of cryptos from the past cycles that aren't i mean meme coins doing extremely well they're outperforming bitcoin avalanche and solana outperforming bitcoin but you look at like polka dot it's been underperforming bitcoin for a while Chainlink, i think is even underperforming bitcoin polygon is underperforming bitcoin um cardano is doing pretty bad honestly uh so yeah those that's just kind of a rundown of the top coins but i am looking at some smaller altcoins like we've talked about sync before i have a big bag of sync um which you can stake 
uh, on their platform for nice APY. Obviously, that's much higher there risk is, than there is a fee as well when you unstake from Sync at the moment. I got. Yeah. I think uh, besides that, <laughs> wait, wait, Zab, I have I, some operation. We lost, we lost you completely there. Whatever you said. <laughs> okay yeah i i just said uh i think i heard from the team that they are getting rid of that uh unstake tax soon but uh i can't confirm a date or anything on that um and then i have some other smaller cryptos too like inspect um we've had a couple really good launches too that have just done extremely well and now they're like pretty decent sized portions of my portfolio and that's kind of how i'm approaching it like the majority of my bag is bitcoin like seventy percent, maybe. Then another ten percent are other big layer ones, and then some smaller projects I've just put in, like under a percent of my portfolio, or now like uh, I don't know, multiple percents. And that's kind of how I'm approaching the smaller cap cryptos. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Nice. I mean, nice. Yeah. Yeah. You can play it a lot of different ways, but that's just kind of how I'm approaching the market right now. I think some of those smaller altcoins are going to do extremely well and some of the most hated ones as we know like satoshi vm still grow to be huge like they did a 40 or 50x 150x at launch so i still expect yeah. that to happen yeah so if you were someone who kind of came into the market a little bit late maybe you maybe you did buy bitcoin at 70k because you thought it was going to continue to run because the moon boys were saying well it's up it's up only there's never going to be a pullback uh, you bought Solana maybe a little bit higher than two hundred dollars, something like that. What would you do in a moment like this? Say, say you allocated a, a, a decent chunk up there. What would be the best course of action right now? I'd just either sit on your hands if you don't have any more cash, or dollar cost average. Like this is very normal to buy and then have the market go down. Like there are very few times where you're going to buy and you're never going to be down on your investment because crypto is so volatile. Uh, and oftentimes people buy at local peaks, like they've seen it go up and up and up. And then they are like, okay, I just have to buy. And then you're the exit liquidity for some people taking profits. So yeah, do one of those things. Um, this is completely normal. If you can't handle this volatility, if you're already selling, like, yeah, just get out of the market. I, I don't care. You can get out uh, and sell your crypto to us. We'll buy it. Um, we'll take it off your hands. And really just this like flushing of people from the market, the people that freak out or they're taking profits, like it just BlackRock alarming rate, right? They're buying hundreds of millions of dollars of Bitcoin a day and they're not selling it. Like they're, they're the ones that are going to hold probably for a long time. Uh, the people that are selling right now are the people that freak out at a 10% dip. So it just makes the market healthier and stronger in the long term, in my opinion. And we see other whales buying a lot too. And if you have multi multiple billions of dollars to buy Bitcoin, you're probably not freaking out at a 5% dip. Like you you've done really well in businesses, you understand how the markets work uh, and you can kind of weather the volatility better than someone that's just investing some money that they need next month for rent or something like that. Yeah. And I think, I think I know that you're like more risk off than I am. I'm very risk on, but like, it doesn't matter about the amount of money that you're putting in the market, right? It matters about how emotionally attached to the money you are and how much you need that money. You should not be investing money like you shouldn't be like it's you shouldn't be trying to make money from the investments unless you're a seasoned investor right or a trader i wouldn't say you should be going into this going okay i'm going to make money from this of course you want to increase your wealth right using crypto and the best way to do that is just by dollar cost averaging into the projects that you actually think are going to go up in the long run we've been bleating on about this throughout the bear market the same thing now if you bought bitcoin two days ago and now it's down 15 percent or whatever it's down this is your opportunity to buy more if tomorrow it goes down 15 more percent you buy more the next day it goes down 15 more percent you buy more and so on and the reason why it's so simple is because i believe that bitcoin's going over 100k eventually why do i care if it's 70k 60k 50k and i was saying the same thing exactly the same thing when it was going from 30k to 20k to 15k i don't care because i think it's going up i've got it's going over 100k i don't know if it's going to go over more than 100k but it's my belief 100k is my number i'm like bitcoin's going higher than that and you should if you are going to be messing with things that you don't actually believe in <laughs> e dot g dot stupid meme coins and i risk these all the time sam doesn't really play in this world but i do all the time i just chuck money at these things but the amount of money that i chuck at people always ask me what's the dollar value of the amount that i put in that's irrelevant it's the what's relevant is is that amount of money to you insignificant so 
today, right? I have a ton of different meme coins that I've bought over the last week. Half of them are probably worth zero today. I don't even care, right? It makes no difference. And that is the key. If you're going to mess with meme coins, mess with money that you're okay to lose. If you're going to mess with Bitcoin, it still has to be money that you're willing to lose, but money that you're willing to hold for a long time. And then in periods like today, you can just simply relax. Dollar cost average. I've lost, lost an absolutely obscene amount of money today, right? An obscene amount of money. But it doesn't matter because I was never going to sell yesterday. So I can't look at my portfolio and be like, oh my God, I've lost all this money because I wasn't going to sell yesterday. So I haven't actually lost anything. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Sam, I'll, I I, I've think, used a lot of your time. Yeah. No, I, I think that this this dip does hurt more than other dips for a lot of people um, because like all our portfolios are just worth more at this point compared yeah. to the dip after the Bitcoin ETFs where we were at 48,000 maybe on Bitcoin and then we fell down to 39,000 or something like that. Like all our portfolios are worth 50% to 100% more. So people and people are probably starting to consider taking profits because we are near all time highs for Bitcoin. We hit all time highs. Some altcoins were rallying up really strong. And now people are feeling like, oh, I should have done that. And I didn't do that. Um, so I do think that there's more pain because of that. But it's just completely normal in a bull market. Like like we said before, nothing has fundamentally changed. It's just a dip flushing out hands, uh, flushing out some leverage. Uh, and it's bound to happen over and yeah, over. Yeah. And yeah. and just take some profit stop listening like stop listening to me stop listening to sam stop listening to the guy on the internet who's telling you whatever it is that you want to hear right because we're talking from a biased perspective of our own our own uh history and our own lessons that we've learned like stop listening wholeheartedly to anyone else and that includes friends and family if you have not taken any money from Solana, right? And Sam, I don't, I, you probably haven't taken any, but like, if, in my opinion, if you have, were in Solana at, let's say, $20 like me, and you haven't taken any profit, you only have yourself to blame if you're stressed today. You should, you, like, if you're not stressed today, then this doesn't go out to you because it doesn't matter. But if you are stressed today, you should have already taken some profits. That's how I do it anyway. And uh, Sam, I'm not sure if you agree, but you're completely frozen. So I'm not sure if uh, you even heard what I said. <laughs> yeah 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 so i agree with you um i i think if that helps you become less emotionally attached to your crypto if it makes you think a little bit more clearly then yeah take some profits even just take out your initial like if you're up 10x in solana take out 10 percent in a year you're not going to be kicking yourself uh because you'll probably make better decisions from here on out but uh yeah, I mean, it all depends on what you're comfortable with. Obviously, if you have 10% of your portfolio in crypto and you really want 20%, maybe you don't want to take profits yet. Um, but it's just depending on what you can handle mentally too. Like there's no point in being uh, highly invested in crypto if you're going to have a terrible life while you're fully invested in crypto. Like figure out something else that you can invest in and handle better. Exactly. All right, mate. Thank you so much for stopping by. If any of you guys want to see more of Sam and you don't actually know him, then I would suggest heading to the description, following the link there, going over to his channel and checking him out. Awesome, awesome uh, financial YouTuber. If you do want to sign up to any of the exchanges that I personally use, the links are in the description. And on top of that, if you do want to know for whatever reason when I make a trade, then there is a link to my Patreon down there in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Peace.